This section is a follow-up to the injector control selection. When we look at the schematic, we can see that each injector is a simple two-wire component controlled by the PCM. In the lower left-hand corner, we can see a photo of an injector without its connector on it, and there is, in fact, two probes in there, one for each wire. The GDI injector uses a peak and hold electrical circuit. The injector resistance is going to range between 2.3 and 16.4 ohms depending on the manufacturers and how they design each circuit. Now the higher current is going to be used to open the injector quickly. A current is then lowered to protect the injector coil. So what happens is in the peak section the higher current opens the injector very quickly. Then the hold section, the current is lowered by the computer so that the injector coil does not overheat. Then on some manufacturers, they have a second lower current stage. The ECM, the PCM, the computer is going to step the voltage from the B plus or 12 volts up to the 65 or the 95 volts required to operate the injector. This charges a capacitor. Now when the computer steps up the voltage, that isn't the voltage used to fire the injector. The voltage that comes from the capacitor is used to fire that injector and it's more controllable when it comes out of the capacitor and it's smoother. The capacitor is going to supply the 65 to the 95 volts that open the injectors. The computer then provides a pulse width modulated 12 volts signal in order to hold that injector open for the program amount of time. Now if you want to see a example of a waveform, go to injector testing.